Hello, and welcome to another video. Everyone who saw our flag means death fell in love with the fuchsia robe, the depression robe or a uh, breakup robe, and everyone who wanted it for themselves has already made it, but my fabric got delayed because of the snow and thus I'm fashionably late to the party. But I will make up for it by being fortunate enough to have had the entire pattern figured out by all the lovely fans of the interwebs. There has been a lot of speculation, but really it's quite a simple pattern once you get down to making it. Unlike the battle jacket or the uh, yellow robe, this is a simplified kimono pattern made out of a printed cotton velvet with piping and tassels. Most of my information comes from this Tumblr post which I will link down below, so let's break it down. We're also fortunate enough to have had some behind the scenes photos from the costumers which is extremely helpful. In this picture right here you can see the cut of the robe. It has the loose kimono sleeves, straight sides but an added piece to the front. This front part is however cut as one with the front panels instead of being a separate piece as with a proper kimono. But you can see the chalk line here indicating where the seam should have been. Another great thing about this picture is that they've laid it out on a cutting mat so we can actually count the measurements of this thing. Unfortunately we don't see the bottom and the collar is folded in. Now, if one small square is one inch we can start counting the grid to find the measurements. So now this side under the sleeve is 34 inches plus this little part at the bottom which is difficult to measure but it could be approximately 5 inches, uh, I'm going with that. And if we say the sleeve lines up with this line on the opposite side we have approximately 24 inches making the length of the gown from the shoulder down 63 inches or 160 centimeters. I measured out my own fabric to compare the print and when comparing the size of these two birds they're the same length, approximately 20 centimeters. The part of the sleeve that lays on the cutting mat is 11 inches and here I made a little ruler once again that I can use along this line to determine the width of these panels. So the sleeve is between 17 18 inches and this front is 16 inches up to this chalk line and 22 in total. On traditional kimonos these panels are determined by the width of the fabric and I will keep to that rule as well. But it looks like the show tried to do the same. When looking up the width of traditional kimono fabrics I found a confusing mix of something between 37.5 to 40 centimeters. I decided to choose what would fit me in the end and measured from my neck to my arm which was 80 centimeters, dividing it and there I have my fabric width. Since I'll be wearing this out, I also didn't want it to be too long, so I made it reach my ankles, which was about 140 centimeters. So this here is what my pattern looked like, only I did not make it this length. As you will see throughout the video as well, it, it doesn't match up perfectly, so keep that in mind if you actually want to use this exact pattern, but it's, it's just a simplified kimono pattern. Because the robe is made out of printed velvet, the front and back pieces of the body and sleeves are cut separately. I won't try too hard to pattern match because I don't have an unlimited amount of fabric. <laughs> okay, we can make that, sure. My front panels then became 60 centimeters wide. I marked my desired length of 140 centimeters and marked my sloped front starting 50 centimeters down and 25 centimeters in. I wanted the pattern on the front to match the front of the sleeves, so I laid it out leaving a 60cm gap of unused fabric. So this will be the back of my sleeve and I'll stick with the 60cm for my sleeve length. I refolded the fabric to that 40cm length and cut out the back pieces first just to be sure I had enough fabric to be pattern matching. I bought four yards of fabric, I needed three and a half, but the extra fabric allowed me to pattern match.
and with my last bit of fabric I cut out the color. This piece uses the floral part of the fabric so I wanted to try the same. I intended for it to be 10 centimeters wide when I finished but I think it was closer to 12 centimeters. And this is made so that I can simply just fold it in half. I spent some time making two perfectly similar pieces and cut them out. This fabric was a joy to work with and I had a lot of fun pattern matching. This was when I realized my perfect copies should have been mirrored. Here's the thing with velvet. You need the fabric to lay the same way or it's gonna show. I didn't want to flip it around to the bird side either and eventually moved on and decided it would have to be a problem for future me. I laid out the pieces of the body, notice the back is cut in one piece. On traditional kimonos you do have a seam in the back because of the width of the fabric, but I don't see any reason to do that with this modern fabric and I do not believe there is one in the show either, I, I can't see it at least. Firstly, I pin and sew the shoulder seams. My sewing machine doesn't like sewing and I had to stretch the fabric to make it sew even, which shows. Then I did the same for the sleeves, sewing them along the top. I matched the sleeve to the main body and stitched only half the length of the sleeve. I started sewing from the center and out to avoid it stretching too much. And after two failed attempts at making the cross match up, I finished it by hand, else I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. This beauty will of course be lined and I picked up this silk lining for steel. My camera has a thing about reds so the color is not displayed correctly. This which looks Christmas red is in fact hot pink and the velvet is more of a pale pink and not as vibrant. I cut out the same sleeve and body pieces as I did for the outer fabric. The lining has a big box pleat which has caused some confusion in regards to the back. It's confirmed by the costumers that only the lining is pleated. I added an extra 10 centimeters for the pleat. It's functional, but I think the original pleat is bigger. I copied the sleeves exactly from the bird fabric, which was really wasteful. I could have just flipped it around and I only bought exactly as much fabric as I would need. This fabric wasn't as wide as the velvet and I started cutting out one front panel thinking I would piece the other. But when I folded it over, it miraculously fit. Uh, that's another problem for future me. This is my remaining fabric and I'm one sleeve short. Piecing is period and it's not like anyone will ever know what lining looks like. For my piecing pieces, I folded under the raw edges and top stitched it to the fabric. And I'm not letting my machine anywhere near this.
I then follow the same steps for lining as I did for the velvet and lay them right sides together. I started by figuring out the box pleat, folding it and stitching it in place. There are a few things as tropical as snow. I match up the sleeves and stitch the ends halfway down from the middle. But wait, I forgot about the piping. It's not easy to make out the colour of the piping in those shots. For a time I was sure it was taffeta with both red and orange threads in it, since it seemed to change colour. I have this beautiful red silk satin that I decided to use. It's the most expensive fabric I've ever spent money on and I hate it with a passion. I cut out workable strips. These were folded in half and sewed to the lining, leaving a centimeter wide border. That is a bit much, but it's so nice looking I want people to be able to see it. The ends were folded in and this silk was stretchy. I didn't know stretch silk was a thing, but I might as well have been working with a slippery spandex. This did gather up the fabric a bit, but I was hoping the weight of the whole thing would ease it out. Now the lining and velvet is joined with a seam. And I'm really happy I chose this red colour, it brings out the red flowers in the print and looks absolutely stunning. I separate the layers and now it's time to sew up the sleeves and side seams. Traditionally kimonos are fully or partly open in the back of the sleeve which allows for ventilation, but since they also function as pockets I close them in fear of things falling out. The armpit section is really awkward and I completely skipped over this when sewing. Then I started pinning the hem. For some reason the front panels were way too narrow, but because of the extra fabric in the back panel I had more than enough lining, but the side seams won't match up. Because I was afraid the lining would peek out from my shortened back, I pulled the velvet to the inside. While I could still turn the gown inside out, I closed the center front by machine and ironed the lining in place. I've been careful not to iron the velvet too much. The future is now and I have a collar to make. I split one in half and closed it again to make it fold the other way. And I realized the trick to avoid the velvet from stretching is using a lot of pins. Like, a lot a lot. I've covered my ironing board in velvet, this way I won't accidentally crush the velvet while ironing. The two colour pieces are then sewn together in the centre back. With the colour pieced up, I started adding the piping. I 
I finished the ends and added a bit of fray check to strengthen the corners for later. Then I baste it on the silk. And finally I pin the collar to the kimono. I hadn't checked whether it still fitted and it was a bit too long but instead of adjusting the front panels I forced it in place which worked fine for the velvet it was at the silk lining I started having regrets it was whip stitched in but was not happy about it in the end I don't think it shows on kimonos you're not supposed to cut away Anything at the center back, it's just supposed to be snipped into and then folded in. I uh, chose to uh, trim away some because of all the bulk in this thick fabric. Remember the armpits I skipped over? Instead of closing them up I decided to leave them open for ventilation, only turning the raw edges in and stitching in place. In hindsight I do regret not making these bigger so they would actually function the way they're supposed to, but then again these are my pockets and I don't want my car keys to disappear at a con. For final touches we have the tassels, and I need four of them. I couldn't find any that was as long as I needed, so I made them from this tassel thingy. I have one meter that I quartered, but I didn't like the size of them, so I halved them again. They were rolled up with the help of some fabric glue and secured with a few stitches. Once in the show has these nice rounded heads and to remedy that and to try and add some detail I covered each tassel head with a gold trim.
They were attached to the end of the sleeves and collar and I used fishing line for this. It's strong and secures decorations with just a few stitches. I also made sure to catch the lining in the sleeve so that it will help keep it in place. In the end I'm very happy with how it all turned out. I feel like the sleeves are too long compared to the ones on screen, which I did realize pretty early on, but the sleeves are also my pockets and so I didn't want to change it. Thank you for following along, I have more costume videos in the making, and hopefully I'll have them all edited before they reveal there's a third season. Anyway, until next time.